Um, I'll open the solution. Um, and so here the Fiona open this this uh, looks like it does in the IPython notebook example, right? Only now we're acting on this geology file, and here I'm I'm creating one list of all the rocks, and I'm taking either rock type one or rock type two and just putting it in there. So any rocks that we see as a bedrock type and in either the primary or secondary rock, and then. Finally, generating the list from the set of rocks. So those will be the unique items in the, in the overall list, right? So if you're able to iterate over this file, oh, I, I guess I didn't mention, but uh, it is nice to use Fiona with the context manager like this, to use the, the format with Fiona.open shapefile as f and then have a, a block and then when that block goes out of scope it will automatically ble be cleaned up for you and you don't have to manually close the file. So that, that context manager is really nice to use, uh, just a nice idiom to, um, to do. So I, that's what I've done in every time. And in the solutions here, I, I open and read the file every time. Obviously it's not very efficient but it's, uh, it's just showing you um, by example so you could do each one separately if you like. Uh, so here is the rock type one. Um, I, th I think a lot of people, everyone who has Fiona running at least, was able to get this far to, to load the rock types and find that list of rocks. Uh, then the next one is actually extracting a different property. So for each, so here, I do this as a default dictionary. You could do this as a standard dictionary as well. Um, here I I add the area of each row or each feature to that, the, area, the total for that rock type. And I create a, a dictionary of areas and I'm adding to those feature by feature. And then I sort it and print it. Let me actually run this. Boom. So there's my rocks, all the different rock types. There's the plot, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, and here are the sorted areas, right? Is that, yeah, so this is sorted by, I, I sorted by area from least to greatest. So alluvium is the, <laughs> the dominant rock type of New Jersey, apparently. Uh, that's the, uh, the Atlantic coastal plain in southern New Jersey. Uh, water, that actually counts the offshore uh, area that's part of this uh, this data set as well, right? And and these units are funny. Does anybody realize what what units these are for area? It's not percent. It's actually square degrees. I think they're they're uh, it's not an area at all. It's it's uh, you know the area of that uh, plat carry projection, <laughs> which is which is not very meaningful, right? Um, so to to do real area calculations, you have to do something else and and um, uh, you can do that in projected coordinates, you know, for a state like this, you would do it in a New Jersey state plane coordinate system and, and you could get real uh, projected coordinates or you could do it in a geographic uh, way and there, there are different ways to do that, uh, not easy ways right here though. In any case, we're just reading the metadata, we're not doing any calculations at this point. This is the, the data that's in this, this shape file. But shapely, for example, you can feed it the polygon and then ask it what the area of the polygon you could, but Shapely is only uh, Cartesian. So if it's oh. unprojected data, you would still get square degrees. So this is, these are the numbers you'd get, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we'll get to Shapely in just a minute here. Um, okay, so, so adding that dictionary, this should be familiar if you've done, um, if you've done some Python programming. Uh, there's nothing that complicated there. And then finally, the plotting. And this we didn't talk about. So if you haven't done polygon patches in, uh, in Matplotlib, this might be unfamiliar to you. But here 
I imported up here from Mat Matplotlib, patches import polygon, and we're creating a polygon patch of these coordinates for each rock type. And I did a little bit of, let's see, to generate a colors that are the same for each, for each kind of rock, but, but uh, you know, so you, you, we only get one color for each kind of rock, not for each feature, which may be the same, multiple rows of the same kind of rock. I use a default dictionary to define a random color every time we see a, a rock for the first time, and then it will recall that same color the next time it's seen. Uh, there are other ways you could do that, but this is a, a pretty simple way. Um, here, I'm unpacking the coordinates, uh, zipping them, projecting them, and putting them back into X and Y, and creating a polygon patch of those X and Y coordinates, and then generating that face color. Then you add that polygon patch to, uh, to the axes, to the current axes, and, um, and that's what actually gets drawn. So I'll run that one more time, and we'll see what so the file. How is this polygon different from the linear plot? It fills. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so the, the polygon patch is doing the filled color for each polygon. Oh, there's some, some refresh bug. I saw this earlier, too. It, it's something like I, I shut the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's some. <laughs> I shut the um, outer part of the map off, and, or the outer, outer part of the plot off, and it, uh, it's some refresh button when I do that. Anyway, so this is this is what the data actually look like. Uh, you could open this up in a in a GIS desktop package, and you, you'd see these kinds of layers. But now we see these are multiple polygons that are the same rock type, right? And these are the same color, so that, that work. My dictionary method works. These brown ones are actually basalt. Um, these are the ancient volcanoes of New Jersey, in northern New Jersey. So. All right. Um, okay, so questions? We'll show another example of plotting when we do the, the shapely stuff here shortly. But I'd like to keep moving. It's 4.20, so we have another oh, it's 4.16 on that clock. Um, we have another few things to get through. So... Let's talk about Shapely. Uh, so Shapely is a geometric library for Python. It works with these other tools, especially with Fiona, but it also can stand alone. It really does a few tasks, and it, you know, it focuses on them. So Shapely does geometry. It does validation and creation and operations, and I'll show you some examples of those. Uh, it's acting on those geometries and creating those geometries um, and doing comparisons on them and so on. It doesn't know anything about map projections. So that was a question uh, before is, is, you know, could you do that calculation in, in Shapely? Uh, you can give Shapely a polygon, but it'll only do the, the calculations on that polygon in whatever coordinates it's already in. So Shapely doesn't know anything about uh, coordinate re reference systems or anything like that. Fiona does, uh, or OGR, and you, you have to deal with that. Once you have something in a planar coordinate system you want to work with and do Cartesian calculations, Shapely can do that. Okay? So, so everything in Shapely is, is confined to Cartesian calculations of area and distance and, and so on. Uh, so it works well for small areas that are map projected. It doesn't work well for unprojected coordinates or for large areas of the Earth, you know, to you calculate the area of Asia or something like that would be uh, something that, that uh, would not work very well in, in Shapely. Uh, but to calculate the area of the different boroughs of New York in the, uh, in the local conformal projection of the New York State Plain, that's going to be fine. Okay, so some of the, the geometric operations that Shapely can do. Uh, different kinds of geometries. I should say, uh, Shapely hand handles the standard vector geometries of points and lines and polygons and collections of those. And here, this is an example of just uh, polygons, which here are approximating a circle. 
you have two circles, um, A dot difference B, where A is the left circle and B is the right circle, uh, the, the difference is the part of A that isn't also part of B, right? So this is a set operation um, of all of the points in A that are not also in B. Uh, B dot difference A is, is the opposite there. A dot intersection B is the common area between both. And A dot symmetric difference B is the, you know, both sided, the, the parts of A and B that aren't in the other, in both, rather. Okay. So this is like set operations, also like Python set work, sets work, right, same thing. Um, Union is another nice operation. You can take a set of polygons, do the union of those polygons, and that will be the area in, in all of it. Uh, and they can act on different kinds of things. Uh, there's a boundary. A polygon has a boundary property. You can do the union of two boundaries and, and so on. So, so union of, of lines or polygons and different kinds of shapes that, that Shapely knows how to deal with. Uh, it can do... Uh, Operations like a, a distance buffer. So here you start with a line. This is here a line is a multi a line string is a multi segment line defined by here six different points, and we define a buffer around that line that has a size of 0 0.5. Again, in these Cartesian units, and it draws the polygon, you know, approximating it to some resolution uh, of of that buffer around that line. And that's the, the light blue area here. And now if we give it a negative, we, we call this again on the, the polygon, we give the buffer on that polygon with a negative number, it will get the interior of that that's that distance from the exterior um, line, the boundaries, and, and we've eroded it down to 0.3 from the uh, from the boundary. All right. So those kind of operations are really easy. Uh, there are binary tests that you can do. So, uh, so object contains another, object crosses another, object equals another, intersects, touches within, and almost equals is a numeric precision operation. Right? So if you have two points, say, uh, you want to compare those two points to numeric precision, you can you say object almost equals means they're close enough to some degree of precision. Can you do that with polygons? Yes, right. So so then if if all of the all of the points that define those polygons are within, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, right. And uh, and these are also I should point out that uh, these are also set operations that you don't have to have the same number of points in a in a line, say. Um, Five away from the line. Here, testing that, that this line is equal to a line that is also defined by three points with, and the middle point is coincident on the, the lines in between, those two line strings would be equal, right? So right. that makes sense, right? So it's, it's a set operation if, if the explicitly defined points are along that line, it's still equal. Um, I should say all of these operations are handled by an underlying library called Geos, which is a you know, compiled, uh, commonly used library. It's the same one that PostGIS uses for its operations. Other tools use it as well. So these are just the Python bindings and, um, and a nice way to access those libraries. Um, let me point this out. I've, seen that I, I've used this in a couple examples already. Uh, but zipping and unzipping points, if you're not familiar with doing this, this is a really common operation. You have a list of tuples that represent coordinates, and you want a, a list of x values and a list of y values, right? And you pass it into some function. So, so here, uh, this is standard tuple unpacking of, of arguments to a function. Zip of all of the tuples in a sequence, here all the tuples in a list uh, called points get passed as separate arguments to the zip function, which then zips them together into you know, pairwise 
uh, well, well item-wise, I guess, into X and Y sequences, now tuples of that length. And now if you've got a function that takes X and Y as arguments, you don't have to define X and Y like this. You can, you can pass star zip of star points, and that will unpack twice, and that's, that's handy. So this is a kind of idiom you see pretty often dealing with these kind of uh, coordinates a lot. And then if it, if it matters, there's also IZIP, which is the, the iterator version of, of ZIP. And uh, that's much more memory efficient, only generates it as needed instead of as a list up front. All right, so let me, let me show you an example. Uh, this is the City Bike program in New York, a bike share program that just started three, four weeks ago. Um, there are these uh, bike share stations all over the city. Um, it's great. I just got my key last week, so I was riding around uh, every chance I got. Um, and uh, they're pretty conveniently located. So let's, let's take a look at where the locations of bike docking stations are in Manhattan. There are some in Brooklyn, too. I just simplified this to the ones in Manhattan. Uh, city bike dock locations in Manhattan. I got this from, uh, from the City Bike website. They have a, a JSON API where you can download the status of these uh, docks at any point. Uh, these are just the locations of the docks. It doesn't have any knowledge about whether there are bikes there or not. All right, so let's say we want to know how far are you from a, a bike docking station at any point in Manhattan, right? So, so uh, what might we want to do here? Well, we can use Shapely to say, what are all the points within one block of a, a bike dock? What are all the points within two blocks of a bike dock? And so on. And I did that and just contoured the results and you get something like this. This is the, the darkest blue is the distance that's less than one block from a docking station. Uh, the next shade of blue is, is uh, two blocks, three blocks, and I think are contoured out to four blocks and everything more than four blocks is still white. So this goes up to 59th Street in Manhattan, everything below 59th Street. There are only a few white patches here. That means that they're farther than four blocks from a, a docking station. Here I'm using 260 feet equals one block. That's the average distance of an uptown uh, Manhattan city block. And I just define a buffer each time of the points with a one block buffer is our first polygon. I call that one block. And I create a new buffer with two blocks and I assign that into uh, a polygon. Uh, here, I'm, and I'm also intersecting it with the island of Manhattan to make sure I don't go offshore, right? Um, so I'm only counting points that are on land. So that intersection makes sure that, uh, that it's in Manhattan and so on. So I just, I just did that separately as, as separate polygons. So let me, let me show you what that code looks like. That was the... short version. This is the full version. So here I've got some, some nice functions to actually plot polygons and multi-polygons. Um, and this, this multi-polygon plot will actually take a polygon so you can, um, if it gets a polygon, it'll pass it to the, multi, uh, the polygon function. So, so that, these two functions will save us a lot of boilerplate lower in, in the, the code. So here, this is just loading the JSON data and converting it to points. So now I've got a, a shapely multipoint object. This is consisting of points in Manhattan, uh, well, in New York uh, state plane coordinates. Uh, I've transferred them to the same as the, as the map. Uh, I'll skip that for now. I, I drew a line at 59th Street. Uh, this is the, the code for the one, two, three, four block radius. Obviously, you could do this in a loop if you wanted to uh, be a, a little bit more efficient, but I'm just doing it explicitly. Uh, and now, explicitly do calls to those four polygons, and that's, this is my, multi, uh, my plot multi-polygon function that actually does those, those colored uh, plots. Right. So... 
far away. Is there a way to generate the long string that you give to Bosch? Is it something Yes, okay, so the question was, was is there a way to, to generate the, this string that you give to Proj? Uh, yes, I could have gotten that string from loading, uh, I don't think, it's not in this JSON file. Uh, you could have gotten it from the original data file, though, yeah, from the shape file. I, I could have generated that, that CRS. Fiona would give you the CRS, yeah. I've just done it explicitly here. Oops, I just I think I got rid of my plot. Okay, there it is. Uh, so then this, this is generating the plot. So the units here, uh, the units of the distance on the contours are one block, 260 feet. The units on the X and Y uh, values. I haven't put it on a map projection, but this is um, this is in our New York State plane. So these are projected feet, right? So these these contours, what they're or the sorry these tick marks are 5,000 feet apart. So just about a mile. So you're looking at five or six miles of of uh, the lower part of Manhattan below 59th Street, essentially. There. <coughs> Uh, yeah, you could, you could calculate the error. On this scale, it's going to be very small error. I mean, uh, I would, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't know what the error is, but I would say it's definitely less than a foot, right, in any, for any given position. You know, I, I think on this scale, I think you're probably in that range, you know. Um, it's, it's pretty good on this kind of scale. If you're looking for a bike, I it, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, you, when, when you talk about precision, this is, this is the location of a bike station, and, and this thing is, uh, some of these are a block long, so they're 200 feet long, <laughs> right? So to, to say you want the precision to a tenth of a foot, you know, it doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. yeah I, yes. Um, Right, so, so this is, Shapely only does planar calculations. Um, there are packages that do geographic calculations. I've got a, a slide on this in a, in a bit if we get to it. On, on PostGIS has a separate geometry and geography types and some, some other uh, data systems have those distinctions as well where geometry is planar and geography is ellipsoidal in some reference system, usually WGS84. And, and uh, PostGIS is nice because it can go back and forth between those, and there are some other systems that can do that as well. In Python, geographic lib is, well, it's actually multi-languages, um, but there is an implementation in Python of geographic lib that does spherical calculations. And I've played a little bit with wrapping, um, with subclassing shapely classes and putting geogra geographic lib methods on them, um, and uh, I can do the area, <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't gone and uh, systematically done the other methods that Shapely does, because for larger regions, you're going to run into issues you'll have to deal with, corner cases and things, but uh, um, yeah, so, so ge geographic lib is a nice way to do some of those calculations. All right, so let's do an exercise. We got half an hour uh, left, so let's, uh, let's try doing some shapely stuff here while we've got time. Uh, let me show the slide. Okay, so this exercise uh, is the, the boroughs of New York City. Uh, so one more time on this data set, we've got the five boroughs. Each one is a multi-polygon, and we'll read it from a shape file with Fiona, and then we'll, we'll do some uh, um, calculations on it. So let's open this file. This is in the exercises NYC. Okay, so the, the questions here, so read the shape file into a dictionary of shapely geometries. You could also put it into a collection. I'm just going to have a dictionary that you can reference by borough name. Um, and then calculate the area of, of each borough. And now these are projected, so what are the units going to be for the area calculations you do with Shapely? Feet, yeah. So these are gonna be, these are gonna be square feet, 
uh, and these, these uh, calculations should be reasonably accurate because they're, they're all projected. And then uh, calculate the fraction of the area of each borough that lies more than one kilometer from its boundary. Okay, and then if you have time, try extracting the, sing the, the simple polygon representing the outer ring of the polygon of the island of Manhattan, not the borough of Manhattan, right? So, so that was the polygon that I extracted to do the, the bike map, is just that simple polygon for the exterior of Manhattan. Okay, but uh, you should be able to do at least these three, I think, in the time we have. If, uh, you've got Fiona working especially. Okay, so uh, give that a shot.